Hey, I'm Michael from the Mr. Crafty Pants YouTube channel and MrCraftyPants.com where I show you how to use and master your Cricut cutting machine. And this is October. Now I am doing a little miniature takeover series during October where every Tuesday of this month, I am making over my parents' front porch for Halloween with the help of my Cricut cutting machine, products from ShopAuntyTay.com, as well as Auntie Tay's SVG membership. Now for today's project specifically, I am showing you how to cut out images or, or cuts larger than the Cricut cutting mat. And in doing so, we are making a super, super cute front porch doormat, perfect for Halloween. So without further ado, let's get crafty. All right, so for our doormats, the main things that we're gonna need to create our doormats is obviously a cutting machine. I'm using my Cricut Maker, but you can also use a Cricut Explore, even a Cricut Joy, although the max width of the Cricut Joy could make it a little bit difficult, but don't get me wrong, it's still completely possible. You can also use a Silhouette Cameo, really any type of electronic die cutting machine will work with this. Today I am also using this Ormask Stencil Film Vinyl, this stuff right here. I did get this from shopauntitay.com. It's amazing and it's literally engineered to create a stencil with. So what I'm actually gonna do is create a stencil in Cricut Design Space or create a pattern or design for a stencil, cut it out on here and then apply it to our doormat. I'm gonna show you exactly the entire process of how I'm going to go about doing that. I am also using Flex Seal, this spray rubberized sealant or coating. This right here is amazing. I love, love, love this stuff. And I highly, highly recommend it to literally everyone who is wanting to create their own custom doormat. I created my mom a doormat with this stuff about five, six, seven months ago or so, and it is still holding up pretty much just as good as the day that I created it. There's obviously some wear and tear on the actual mat itself, but on the parts of the mat where this was laid down, it looks great. So zero complaints there. It's absolutely amazing and I highly, highly recommend it. You're also obviously going to need a doormat, right? And I am using this one right here from Target. I got this for about 10 bucks or so. It is 18 inches by 30 inches. Now I know that a lot of people like to get their doormats from Ikea and that's absolutely great, but we don't live close to an Ikea at all. So <laughs> this is what I am working with today. But let me just tell you that if you're using the same exact process that I'm, I'm gonna show you today, you can pretty much do this exact same scenario on almost any type of mat and it should work with no issues whatsoever. And one more thing, we're also gonna need an SVG to help create our design with. And I'm gonna get that from the Craft Day Creator Membership from AuntieTay.com. All right, so here I am on auntietay.com. And again, I am using the Craft Day Creator Membership. And just to take a look at that real quick, I'm gonna come right over here to where it says Members. Click on that and then I'm gonna select Become a Member. Now, here's the thing, y'all. This membership is a remarkable deal. Truly, it starts at only $8 a month and you get unlimited access to literally thousands of SVG files, hundreds of fonts. Like it's just, it's crazy. There's so, so, so much to it. I, I just, I'm, I'm in love with it. <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about right here. So this is the Craft Day Creators membership. It's only $8 every single month. And as you can see here, here are all the different perks. You get like a new SVG bundle every single week released to you. And unlike the Cricut Access membership, you can actually keep these files files forever. Once they're downloaded to your computer, they're downloaded to your computer. There's no going back. Unlike with Cricut Access, well, you're basically renting out those fonts and those SVG files every single month. And if you ever cancel your membership, well, then you don't have any access to those files anymore. So that's what makes this extremely different from Cricut Access. One of the reasons I love this membership so, so, so much. And as you can see, there are also two other tiers. If you want commercial use for your files that you're using, that's like $13 every month, which is just, again, insanely affordable, such a really, really great deal. And you get commercial rights to all of the digital files that are not for personal use only. And then also here is a business member tier as well. So be sure to go and check all that out if you haven't done so already, because it's amazing y'all. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna come back up here towards the top of the page and I wanna hover right over where it says SVGs and then come down here towards the bottom of this little drop-down menu and I'm gonna select Holiday SVGs. 
And as you can see, here are a bunch of different types of holiday icons. And I'm gonna come down here and look for Halloween, which is this one right here. I'm gonna select that. And let's see, I'm gonna come down here just a little bit further. Let me just point this out real quick. These t-shirt costume ideas are just so flipping and durable. I'm obsessed. Be sure to check this out because it's so, so cool. So cute. All right, so as you can see, there are a bunch of different Halloween SVG files right here. Absolutely freaking amazing. There's so many that I love. I like, I love, love, love this one right here that says, I put a spell on you. So cute. Like mommy's little monster or momster. A witch lives here with her little monsters and one handsome devil. Uh, it's just a bunch of hocus pocus. I mean, come on y'all. These are just so, so adorable. So be sure that you stay tuned every single week, every Tuesday, cause I'll be coming back here throughout the month of October and showing you all how to use a bunch of these SVG files. All right, so I'm gonna come back up here towards the top and for this doormat specifically, I am gonna click on this little bat SVG file right here. And one of the things I absolutely love about the membership site is that I'm pretty sure all of the files are now converted to where all you have to do is do one single click and it automatically downloads for you. So I am using the Chrome browser. And as you can see right here at the bottom left-hand corner, it went ahead and downloaded that zip file for the bat SVGs with just one simple click. So, so, so simple. I'm gonna click on that to unzip that folder. And here is our file right here. So. I'm now actually gonna come over here to Cricut Design Space and I'm gonna upload that SVG file to the canvas here. So to do that, I'm coming over here to the left-hand side of the page, clicking on upload, and then I'm gonna select upload image and then browse. And then I'm just gonna do a search for bats. There we go. And there is our SVG file right there. So I'm gonna click on that and then select open and then come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select save. All right, so here it is right here in our recently uploaded images. I'm gonna select that and then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select insert images. There we go. Awesome. So if you all know me, if you all hang around my channel at all, then you all probably know that I love creating templates for things. To me, it's just the absolute perfect way, the easiest way to resize images inside a Cricut Design Space to fit perfectly on the surface that you're applying it to. Now, like I said a little bit earlier, our doormat is 18 inches by 30 inches. So all I'll need to do is come in here and create a template that is 18 inches by 30 inches. And I'll know exactly how I wanna lay out my bats onto that doormat and exactly how big to size each of those bats. It's just so simple, y'all. So to do that, I'm coming over here to the left-hand side of the page and clicking on shapes. And for this rectangular doormat, I'm gonna open up a square. Now, as you can see, the color of the square is like a charcoal gray. The color of the square does not amount to a hill of beans. It has no bearing whatsoever on your final project. But I feel like sometimes it's just a little bit easier for some people to see what it's going to look like, or at least have somewhat of a visual of what things are going to look like once it's all said and done. So because of that, what I'm going to go ahead and do for you guys is come up here towards the top left hand corner, click on this little color swatch, and let's change that to this brown color right there. All right, so now we need to resize it to be the exact same measurements as our doormat. And to do that, I'm coming up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says size. And this little padlock right here is basically locking in the proportions of that square. So if we change the width to be 18 inches, because that padlock is locked, it will automatically change out the height to be 18 inches as well, which we do not want. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that little padlock and I'm gonna come over here and for width, I'm gonna put in here 30 inches because that's how wide our doormat is. And for height, I'm gonna come over here and put in here 18 for 18 inches. All right, so now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom left-hand corner and just zoom out. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and right click our doormat or our doormat template and then select send to back. There we go. So now I'm gonna click and drag these bats right over top of our doormat like so. And if you'll take a look over here at the right hand side of the page in the layers panel, you can see that all of these bats are grouped together, but I'm actually wanting to rearrange these bats and lay them out onto this doormat template the way that I want them to be. So to do that, all I have to do is come up here towards the top right hand corner of the page, right above the layers panel and select ungroup. There we go. And so now since those are ungrouped, we can actually grab each individual bat. We can resize it, we can rotate it, we can flip it, reverse it, whatever, okay? <laughs> we can actually just go through and grab each of these little bats, resize them accordingly, and really just create the design that we want to have on our doormat.
All right, so as you can see, the mat is starting to come together in the way that I envisioned it. This is just what I personally have envisioned for this particular doormat. You can put your name on here. You can really do so many different things, so do not feel obligated to do exactly this. If you do not want all these bats, you also don't have to have all these bats. All you have to do is click one of the bats, whichever ones you don't want, and then just click this little red X right here at the top left-hand corner of that bat image. At the same time, if you wanna create even more bats, all you have to do is right-click it and then select to duplicate, or come up here towards the top right-hand corner and select to duplicate there as well. And one of the things I'm really wanting to incorporate into this specific mat is I really want some of these bats to be actually flying off the edge of the mat. To kind of give the illusion that it's actually kind of continuing on even past what we can see is happening on the doormat. So to do that, I'm just kind of dragging it up here, having little bits and pieces of them kind of laying off the side of the mat. And uh, we'll take care of that whenever that time comes, I promise. All right, so I'm really liking how that's looking. So what I'm actually gonna do is actually grab our template right back here and then just drag that out of the way. Once we actually have that out of the way, I'm gonna click and drag over all of these bats and I am now gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld. And the reason I'm actually wanting to use weld is because I'm actually wanting to create a slice out of all of these bats right here. And we can only slice if two layers are selected. Sometimes people get confused and they think that an SVG file despite how many layers it has, is just one single layer. And sometimes SVG files are one single layer. That can be absolutely true in some circumstances, but not always. <laughs> so now since all those bats are now one single layer, I'm now going to drag our doormat right back underneath of all of them, just like so, and just try to get the exact same positioning that I had before. And that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to click and drag over all of this, doormat included, and I am now going to come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select slice there we go all right so here we go so this is all the remnants from the outer edges of that doormat so that is garbage we don't need that anymore so I'm gonna go ahead and click this little red X right here and there we go so there is our bats the way that they should be and here is our doormat like our template with um, all of those bats there as well we don't need that anymore either so I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag over all that and then click this little red X up here at the top left hand corner all right, so there is our image, right? Fairly simple, not too complicated in the slightest, or at least I don't think that it is. But here's the thing. So the Cricut cutting machine, at least the Cricut Maker and the Cricut Explorer, the max cutting size for that is 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches, which confuses some people and rightfully so because the normal, the average Cricut cutting mat, the standard grip cutting mat is 12 inches by 12 inches, but they have to account for margins and, and things along those lines. So the max cutting size on this is 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. Now, even if you have the larger cutting mat, which is like 12 inches by 24 inches, the max cutting size for that one is 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches. So regardless, with this being 18 inches by 30 inches, we can't cut out all of this onto one single mat. It just, it's not possible. So what we're actually gonna do is slice this. And to do that, what I'm actually gonna do is come over here to the left-hand side of the page, click on shapes again, and click on square. And this square is gonna represent a cutting mat. It's gonna represent this cutting mat right here. You could also do the same concept with the 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat. But I know that most people don't actually have that cutting mat at home. They have the 12 inch by 12 inch. So I'm gonna show you a way that you can create a larger stencil like this with only the 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mats. So the first thing I wanna do is actually turn this green. Again, this doesn't amount to a hill of beans, but I really feel like it helps people visualize what the end result is gonna look like or be like. So I'm gonna come up here towards the top left-hand corner, click on this little color swatch, and let's just change that to green. And that little square right there that represents this cutting mat right here. But we do need to go ahead and change the size of this, right? And to do that, I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas where it says size. I'm gonna leave that little padlock locked because we do want a perfect square. And for that width, I'm gonna put in here 11.5. So not the actual measurements of the mat itself, but the max cutting size of the mat itself. As you can see, since that padlock is locked, it went ahead and changed the height to be 11 and a half inches as well. And now what I actually want to do is duplicate this mat by right clicking it and then selecting duplicate. 
And I'm actually gonna come down here towards the bottom left-hand corner and just zoom in just a little bit. And I really want these mats or these templates of mats to be as close together as possible. All right, so I think that that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag over those mats and then right click it and then uh, select to duplicate. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag those right down here underneath of those other two mats. All right, so now I'm gonna come down here and zoom back out just a little bit. I'm going to right click our bats and then select a center front. And as you can see, our stencil still won't fit onto those four mats, right? So we actually need to create more. <laughs> so I'm gonna click and drag over two more of these squares, right click it and then select to duplicate. And then again, just line these up as close together as possible. We can even come down here towards the bottom left hand corner, zoom back in if we need to, just to make sure that they are as close together as possible. All right, so now I can actually zoom back out and then click and drag these bats right over top of all of these mats, just like that. All right, so we know that we can actually cut out a stencil this large with six of our cutting mats, right? All right, so I'm actually gonna click on our stencil, on our pattern here, and then holding down the shift key, I'm gonna select this first mat up here at the top left-hand corner, and I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select a slice. I am now gonna hover right over the second mat right up here in the top center, click our design, and holding down the shift key, I'm gonna select that mat, and then come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select slice. Now the same thing with this third mat, I'm gonna select our design, hold down the shift key, select that mat, and then come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select slice. And I'm gonna keep repeating the exact same process for all of these mats on the lower row as well. All right, so now if we actually click and drag our bats off to the side, we can see that these are now divided up to be the exact size that they need to be to cut out onto these mats right here. I really, really believe that this opens up just a completely different door of possibilities with your Cricut cutting machine. Like the possibilities are nearly endless y'all. And I, I love that. All right, so now I'm gonna click and drag over all these mats and then come up here towards the top left-hand corner and select that little red X. And there we go. They fit together just like that. All right, so now I'm actually gonna come here towards the top right-hand corner and select make it. And I'm gonna turn on my Cricut maker and we'll get started cutting. All right, so for our base material settings for our stencil film vinyl, I'm gonna change the cut settings to stencil vinyl. <laughs> and so for that, what I'm actually gonna do is come over here and select browse all materials. If you are on a Cricut Explorer, all you'll need to do is turn your dial over to custom and then this page should pop up for you. I'm gonna select browse all materials and then just do a search for stencil. And I'm gonna do the stencil vinyl right here. And then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select done. All right, so now we can go ahead and load this and get started cutting. And when we're removing your stencil film vinyl from your cutting mats, I always like to flip my mat over and peel the mat away from the vinyl instead of the other way around. That just helps prevent any damage from occurring to your actual mat or to your actual vinyl rather. Also, one more thing, whenever you're weeding out stencil film vinyl, you basically have to weed in reverse. And I'm not talking about reverse weeding either. Basically, you have to weed out the parts that you would normally keep on most any other type of project. For example, we won't be actually removing all of this, this base layer of stencil film vinyl. Instead, we're actually gonna weed out the little bat wings inside instead.
Thank you so much for watching this takeover. Do not forget to stamp that like button as well as drop a comment down in the comment section below, just letting us know what you thought of today's project. Also, while you're at it, if you have not yet subscribed to Auntie Tay's channel, now's the perfect time to do so. You do not want to miss out on another episode of October. Now, if you are wanting to learn how to use or master your Cricut cutting machine, you may want to head over to my channel and subscribe there as well. Just search on YouTube for Mr. Crafty Pants Cricut Tutorials, or I'm sure there's probably a subscription link down in that description box below. Thank you again. I'm just so, so, so appreciative of you for watching. And until next time, stay crafty.